Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I want to speak about unleashing the power of faith, embracing God's goodness. We are all too familiar with the expression, God is good all the time. But most of the time, many believers only say this as an anthem without faith attached to it. Because when life issues hit, most times we ask ourselves, if God is really good, this should not happen. If God is really good, maybe we should not be going through this. We should not even be having this conversation about this hardship, about this turmoil, about these things that I'm going through. The aim of this video is for you to embrace the goodness of God such that the power of faith could be unleashed, which will help you have hope in times of despair. And there are so many good with it when your faith is attached to embracing the goodness of God. Psalms 34 verse 8 says, Open your mouth and test. Open your eyes and see how good God is. Blessed are you who run to Him. The truth is that when you embrace the goodness of God, when you see and test of the goodness of God, you will have him as a place of refuge. You will always run to him. You will trust his heart. You will trust his character. You will trust his word because you know he is good and he wants the best for you. Point one, a glimpse into the heart of God. I don't know if you've had any experience of knowing someone that has the capacity and the power to do something, maybe like a rich person who has the resources to help, but then they lack their hearts to help. And most times, we could see God as this big person, which we do not doubt his ability. We know he is able. We know he's powerful. Of course, we sing about this in church. We talk about this all the time. We've seen the act of power that he has expressed. So we do not have a problem of believing that God is powerful. We do not have a problem of believing that God is able. We do not have a problem believing that God has the capacity to do what we need him to do. But most of the time, the problem we have is believing that God is good. That he has the heart and willingness to do the things we ask of him. And this is clearly expressed in Matthew when Jesus had an encounter with a man that had leprosy. Scripture says, suddenly a man with leprosy approached him and knelt before him. Lord, the man said, if you are willing... You can heal me and make me clean. Jesus reached out and touched him. I am willing, he said, be healed. And instantly the leprosy disappeared. This story portrays the heart of God. Jesus came in human form to portray God to us, to show us the heart of God, to show us the nature of God. And you can see in scripture that every way Jesus went, he had compassion. He was always moved by compassion. I have the mindset that whenever I have trouble, I will run to God. I won't run away from God. I will not think that God's timing might be delayed because God will not act fast. I will trust his timing. I will not try to let my emergency and the urgency of my situation to pull me, but I will trust in God. So in the places that you may have doubted God's goodness, I want you to come to a place of hearing Jesus say to you, like he said to that man, I am willing. I love you. I am willing to do this for you. I am willing to help you. I am willing to promote you. I am willing to take you higher. You know he's able. Believe in his willingness and trust his heart. When you truly know the heart of God and how good he is, you'll be convinced in your faith. Your faith will be unleashed. The problem with you having faith is about knowing who you put your faith in, the object of your faith. And God is the object of your faith. If you would not know and believe that God is good, you would not be able to unleash the power of your faith to believe God or to receive from Him. Paul said in 2 Timothy, The confidence of my calling enables me to overcome every difficulty without shame. For I have an intimate revelation of this God, and my faith in Him convinces me that He is more than able to keep all that are placed in His hands safe and secure until the fullness of His appearing. Paul was in prison saying this, even in the place of difficulty, I am convinced. I know who I believe. I know how good God is. I know He is able. I know He loves me. And in Jeremiah, we see what God Himself says about Himself. But those who wish to boast should boast in this alone, that they truly know me and understand that I am the Lord who demonstrates unfailing love and who brings justice and righteousness to the earth. 
and that I delight in these things. I, the Lord, have spoken. God is saying here, this is what I delight in, in unfailing love, in mercy, in grace, in favoring you. I delight in justice. I delight in bringing righteousness and judgment. This is part of God's goodness. God is good. That is why he does justice. And he loves justice. And he delights in justice. He delights in things being done the right way. He delights in righteousness. That is why he tells you to live a righteous life. That is why he wants you to walk upright because of his goodness and his faithfulness. And you can talk about his mercy. The scripture says his mercy endures forever. His anger is just for a moment. You will see the heart of this God that he is so good. We can only but have a glimpse into the heart of this awesome God. Number two, the proof that you believe in the goodness of God is your obedience to him. If you would not believe that God is good, why would you obey him? Why would you trust him? Why would you entrust yourself to him? Because if God tells you do this and you don't believe that he is good, you will not be able to do it because you don't know the outcome. You might think the outcome will not benefit you. And that is the problem that a lot of Christians have with God. They do not believe that God is good. We only profess and try to hide God. God, you are good. God is good all the time. And we don't believe it. So what is the use of saying it? Because if I really believe that God is good and God tells me, do not go into premarital sex, I would know that he is good and he's not telling me this because he just wants to stop me from enjoying life. But he's telling me this because he's preserving me and he's protecting me. And he's trying to keep me away from evil. But when I do not know that he is good, every command that he gives will be something that I am resisting. Because to me, I'm like, God has come again. He doesn't want me to enjoy life. And that is the devil's agenda to make you think that God is not good. You can see that at the Garden of Eden, when the devil went to Eve and was deceiving her, telling her that God is not good. Because that is the old picture that he was trying to paint. And Eve believed that picture. And every attempt of deception from the devil is to make you derail from getting all that God has promised you. So when God gives you a word, like he told Abraham, leave your house and go to the place I will show you of. Abraham did not even know where he was going. But because he believed God, that is why the Bible calls him the father of faith. Because he did not have any evidence, but he believed. God told him move. And he moved immediately without questioning God because he knew God's heart. He trusted that God is good and God would never do him evil and God would never lead him astray. And that is the kind of faith that can be unleashed when we trust God's heart. But if we do not trust God's heart, we will keep on dabbling in disobedience. So I want you to have this outlook of life that whatever God tells you to do, it is for your good. God does not tell you to do something that will not benefit you. Everything you do, which you claim that you do for God, is not benefiting God but you. Serving God, being in God's presence, giving your time to study the word of God, it is actually for us. It is for you and me. If I'm fasting, I'm not fasting to make God become bigger. I'm fasting to get acquainted with God. If I'm praying, I'm not praying for God to have more money to give me. I'm praying such that I can embrace his goodness. So everything I get to do, which is a privilege that I even do these things, every act of service that I serve God with, it is for my good. Now in scriptures in Matthew, this man came to Jesus and called him good master. And when I was studying that scripture, I was asking myself, why did Jesus kind of question him? Now behold, one came and said to him, good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So he said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is God. At the end of the day, Jesus had this conversation with him and he told him, go sell all your goods and give it to the poor and come and follow me because that is the good thing that you are to do to gain eternal life. And this man on his own could not do that because his heart had been captured by his riches and he could not trust that Jesus, whom he called good, is really that good. So this is to affirm the point that when you obey God, it is a proof that you believe in the goodness of God. Number three, understand God's loyalty. When you look at life, you realize that people only label others good because the person is loyal or because the person obeys. 
them. And a parent would label his or her child good. This is my good child because the child obeys them and the child is loyal to them. Now I want to portray this to our mindset that we have towards God. Because most times we feel like God is only good when he does good to us. We call God good when good things happen to us. Which means the reverse would stand true that when bad things happen we will be like, well, is God really good? And we would doubt his goodness. And when you come to a place of understanding God's loyalty, you would know that God is not answerable to you. God is not loyal to you. And yeah, that is a hard saying. He's not loyal to you to do everything you desire, to do everything you want, to go by your timing. No, you and I are answerable to God. God is only loyal to his word, to his will, to his ways, to his plans, to his promises, to himself. So if we want to test of the loyalty of God, we have to align with his word, align with his will, align with his promises, align with everything he has said. That is only when we can test of this goodness, of this loyalty of God. We can't test of it outside of us accepting his word and believing his promises. In the book of Numbers, God told Israelites, go and possess the land. And they are in this place that they doubt God's heart. And they operated in disbelief to God's promise. And in Hebrews chapter 4, it talked about them that they could not enter into the promise because they did not mix the word of God with faith. And this is to encourage you to know that God is loyal to his word. So if you have ate a word from God, mix that word with faith and run with it. Unleash the power of your faith and embrace the goodness of God such that you will appropriate all that God has promised you. I bow down before your divine presence and bring you my deepest worship as I experience your tender love and your living truth. For your word and the fame of your name have been magnified above all else. This scripture is simply saying God exalts his word and his name above everything else. Which is God is loyal to his word. He is committed to keeping his word and his name. He is not committed to our emotions and our feelings. He is not committed to the words will be like God if you are really good you will do this for me. He's not committed to that. He's committed to his word and his name. Psalms 119 says, You are good and do only good. Teach me your decrees. Now, this is a place of coming to submit your heart to God. Because you know he is good and he does good. God, teach me your decrees. Because I know when I walk in your decrees, that is the only place that I receive the good from you. It is a place of coming to the joy of knowing that I have no good beside you, God. You are my only good thing. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful. For he cannot deny who he is. God is loyal to himself and he is good. And he cannot change from being good. Everything that God created, he saw that it was good. Then he moved on to create another one. He created good because he is good and he knows what is good. So don't disbelieve God's heart concerning his goodness for you. Number four, the goodness of God is not defined by our circumstances. God is good. That is his nature. He will not change from being good. Even though things may not be good in life, that doesn't stop God from being good. In good or bad times, we have choices and our choices have consequences. If you choose what God tells you to choose, you get the good consequences that comes with it. But if you choose otherwise, you get the bad consequences that come with it too. And the scripture says that God has made man perfect. But man has chosen many inventions. Man has gone on his own way. We have all chosen our own ways against the way of God. And that will not change who God is. Because scripture has already said, even if we are unfaithful, even if we are faithless, God will still remain faithful. He will not deny himself. So whether it is good or bad times, our experience of life does not define God's goodness. But God's goodness remains constant. The scripture says, Every gift God freely gives us is good and perfect. Streaming down from the Father of light, who shines from the heavens with no hidden shadow or darkness and is never subject to change. So God gives what is good freely 
and he is not subject to change. Since God decided to give us the breath of life and he breathed into our nostrils and we live, God has not one day brought in another law to say, anytime you do this, I will cease your breath for an hour. Anytime you do that, I will, I will stop you from breathing. We know that there are so many things that happen in life, but you can see the goodness of God in the free gift he has given to us. But then when you come to personalizing the goodness of God, there are so much more that you can get from God. Loads of goodness and benefits if you can only embrace his goodness, that his goodness is not affected by your circumstance. I know that for my life, I've asked God a number of times, why me? I had a gas accident, gas explosion in my home a few years ago. And I asked God, why me? Deep within my heart. And the answer I got from God is, but you're still alive. And that humbled me. To me, in my mindset, I thought that God would not even let anything that looks like evil to come to me. Because that is what we think as believers, that I should not even know it, I should not even experience it. But do you know how many accidents God has saved you from that you do not even know? Do you know how many hidden plans of the enemy that God has saved you from that you don't even know? But most of the time, we do not even go to a place of unleashing our faith to trust God. But God still protects and keeps us. And a little moment of something happening that makes us feel uncomfortable, we are now asking God, why me? Why did you allow this? But then you have to know that God is loyal to his promise. God did not promise that bad things won't happen. He only promised that no evil that is formed against you shall prosper. He did not promise that the weapon will not be formed. Which means, since he did not promise that, the weapon maybe is formed and it will be customized for you. But he says it will not prosper. The accident God saved you from, it might have been the one to take your life. And God decided to keep you alive. The accident I had did not come for me to survive. But God made me survive it. Some of the occurrences that happened in your life was not for you to survive and still breathe. So quit asking God, why me? And then look at his heart that he is so good to you. And then allow your faith to go towards believing him and trusting him to keep you. Because it is when you unleash your faith that you come to a place of living a life of evil not befalling you. In the book of Job, it says, from six disasters, he will rescue you. Even in the seven, he will keep you from evil. That comes when you unleash your faith. That God will keep you from evil. That it would not even come to you. And this is to say, whenever you experience anything that is uncomfortable, do not come to a place of thinking, if God is really good, this shouldn't happen. But come to a place of knowing that God is good. I am convinced. That is why Romans 8 says that, Everything, good and bad, ugly and beautiful, works together for the good of those who trust God, who love God, and are called according to His purpose. Because we know that, deep within, I'm convinced that God is good. I am not doubting His goodness, but I know that life is hard. Now I have to hold the tension of both, that life is hard and God is good. So I will trust God's goodness through the hardship of life, because that is what will take me through this action. That is what will take me through these situations. That is what will help me to have patience to persevere. And I would know that when I hold the tension that God is good and things are not working, my faith will be built. The power of my faith will be unleashed to hope that even though I'm facing troubles, I know that my hope is in Jesus. I know that my hope is in God. I know that He will rescue me from these things. So I hope this video has been so beneficial to you and that you've taken something, even if it's one thing, from this video. If you have benefited from this video, do not forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. My name is Uwem Akban. This is my YouTube channel. Do well to subscribe to this channel and follow up with other contents that I've released already and the future contents that are coming. Join in this community and let me know your questions and your thoughts towards this video in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye.